Hello there. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my do-it-yourself solar, solar project that I did. Um, so first of all, a little while ago I, I started looking into this. I had some Vivint Solar and Solar City guys come by my house and quote me on what it cost to get solar up and running. Um, most of them were saying about 25 grand. Um, and then after tax rebates and uh, credits and stuff, it would be like 16 grand. And I have a 3,400 square foot place. We use about 12,000 kilowatt hours per year, about a thousand a month. Um, so that sounded pretty good, but it, you know, like our bill's only about 100, 120 bucks a month. So it'd take, you know, probably 10 years to, to break even. So I started looking at um, other options of doing it myself. Um, so I'll, I'll give you some details on, I, I decided to go that route and I'll tell you about what, uh, what options I, or how much it ended up costing me. Um, so I, yeah, I need a seven kilowatt system and <clears throat> I'm in South Jordan, Utah. So, um, we get pretty good sunlight here and stuff. So, um, let me show you what I got. So I bought all the solar gear from Sun Electronics online. They're a wholesaler. Um, with shipping and everything um, and then all so for all the materials for all the uh, permits I did building permit um, HOA approval and then talk, working out with Rocky Mountain Power um, I, out the door everything cost about $8,500 um, and then after tax incentives uh, there's 30% federal and then 25% Utah state of Utah up to $2,000. So out the door total, I'll be a little under 4,000. I'll, I have a spreadsheet that I have this all listed in. I'll link to that. Um, so you can have a look and see a manifest of all the materials and then, um, what they cost. So, so for four grand, it means my break evens about, um, three, three years out. So, um, so here are the solar panels. I got 30 of them on a pallet. They're 235 watt. Um, so about seven, you know, seven thousand watts total. Um, got some conduit there that I'm going to put up. I'll show you on the roof in a bit. Um, also grounding stuff so I can ground all the panels. Um, and then the, another main component is this inverter, this Sunny Boy, seven kilowatt uh, Sunny Boy inverter. That those are the main supplies. I bought everything from Sun Electronics. Um, Lowe's, Home Depot, and then eBay. Okay, here we are up on my roof. Um, I, I'm in a couple stages of the project. So over there you'll see I have, I built my own racking system instead of paying the $1,800 that they wanted to charge me um, for a racking system. It's pretty simple, just using treated lumber, some tar and rubber stuff, and then just mounting it to the trusses in your roof. And it should hold up fine over 20 or 30 years, which is the expected life of the system, um, especially because the panels are going to be protecting all that wood from weatherization for the most part. Um, so they're, they're, I'm going to put five panels over there, 10, another five. This, these, this five and that five will be in a string. So I'll have a string of 10, string of 10 here, and then another string of 10 over here on the back of my garage. Um, so those all connect in series. So you just put female to f or male to female all the way around, and then out of the ends here you have a male and a female coming out. So that'll just go right to the inverter through conduit down into the. I'll put my my inverter right over there. So I'll have basically a male and a female, um, and three of those. So six total. And then I'll have a grounding wire that goes in from all of them. Um, and it'll all go down into the inverter there. And, and I went to a website that told me how to do all this. It calculates how much power it'll generate based on where you live, what equipment you're using, um, what like the angles are and everything. It's amazing. So I'll link to that website as well. Give you a better idea on how these um, my racking system worked basically i just put down these feet that are about six inches long and 
mount them with a couple screw four inch screws into the trusses then I um, and I put tar on, on the bottom of it a bunch of tar and then I put this little rubber flap over it so that and, and under the the uh, shingle there so that water will just come and not really be weathering this uh, treated wood and it, you know prevent leaks and everything and then I just put this uh, this rail on um, and that should be pretty solid uh, also I have this is one of the more expensive parts is I had to buy these special uh, things on eBay that are for solar systems in particular um, but that's a good idea because that's what's pinching this thing down um, so you want to get something solid that pinches the solar panel down so I have those all over and I also by the way did this all myself like I just hoist the solar panels right up on the ladder and um, so you can even do it with a one-man job I I probably it's probably total is going to take about 60 or 70 hours of installation of my time another 20 or 30 in buying the equipment and, and maybe 10 in approvals and stuff I have that broken out in the spreadsheet as well but um, I, I think about a hundred hours totals and four thousand bucks you can do this for a, a, a house similar to mine okay I'm gonna give you an update now first wanted to show you this sunrise I've seen a lot of beautiful sunrises up here from my uh, roof so that's a nice little perk of doing this okay so again I've got all my panels on um, and I've been wiring now in this conduit. I wanted to show you also, I forgot to mention, so I've got these, this rubber flap that prevents the water from getting under this treated lumber. But I've also, I also put another, um, everywhere where the solar panel contacts the treated lumber, I put another little rubber flap in there. And that's just to make it so, I guess this treated lumber has some chemicals on it that can corrode this aluminum frame. So it's good to, uh, have that barrier there so anyway then I've got um, when you look here I've got my my grounded wire and then my two my positive and negative so all these are connect the positives to are connected to all the negatives in this all the males to females in this big string and they all come and then the, the two wires that come out of it are positive and one a negative and then a ground this grounding wire I've been um, I've been putting these little to connect them I have these grounding lugs that I screw on there and then just this thing connects through there so that's basically to just make it so if, if the lightning hits this uh, panel then it'll go through the grounding it'll go into this grounding wire which eventually will go into the ground like a grounding rod either the one from my house or a grounding rod that I put in so then it goes through this Heiko thing that's a rubber rubber sealed and you, you screw that on and it makes it so no water can get into your conduit. And then goes into this thing, this box. And then I just have um, the conduit coming from all the panels down into one. This is one inch conduit. So as you can see there, it's a, there's a junction there and it wraps around eventually uh, all that wire there's so in my case I have three strings this this five and this other five um, are connected in series and so really just similarly there's just two that come from that so at the end of this there are six wires three positive three negative and then a grounding wire that'll come down and those all go into to my inverter and then the grounding wire will go into the ground um, into a grounding rod okay got everything up and running now you can see there's a few of the panels and then over here I've got this flexible conduit coming down um, there you'll notice there a sticker for to meet code I had to have these stickers um, so basically I come down in that conduit there then I come into my combine, or sorry, my um, DC disconnect. So that's to turn off the panels if you need. 
Then up here you've got the inverter. And you'll see another sticker there that, again, I had to put a bunch of these stickers on. So basically the DC comes in to that switch and then into the inverter and then AC comes out, the alternating current. Then you have to have this little box here Basically, so the, the power company can come turn it off if they need. Um, turn off the AC while they're working on it. Um, and also, you'll notice there's a lightning arrestor on there. They, they provide some of those from my solar company. You don't really need them, but it, it's just to slow down light if lightning hits. So then, AC continues on and goes into my main power of the house. Um, and then you'll notice here's my net meter what's cool is you've noticed this flips between so right there it's saying 19 so I've contributed 19 kilowatt hours today I just turned this on yesterday and then we've used 25 kilowatt hours since uh, we they turned it on late last evening so through the night we used a bunch of kilowatt hours but then today as it's sunny we're producing a bunch and hopefully we'll produce more than we even have used in the last 24 hours also, you'll notice here I've got, I added a breaker, that 30 amp one. Um, so that's what those wires come down into. They, they come in, the, the four of them come in and do ground. The neutral go into this bar thing. And then the hot wires, the red and the black ones go into that, that fuse. Or that, uh, that circuit breaker. And again, I have some stickers on in there. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to take apart some of these other things. Um, and I'll show that in the next video clip, but I also wanted to show what's cool on the on the um, Inverter it has this LE LCD display. I don't know if you can see it there But basically right now we're can, we're making 5725 watts so about 5.7 kilowatts and again my systems Rated to up to 7 kilowatts, so it's almost peaking out right now and midday Today it's produced almost 30 kilowatt hours and then uh, total, I've produced about 200 mega or kilowatt hours over over the life of this thing. I, I made the mistake of turning it on before I got my net meter in, so I actually got billed last month for um, the power gets. You basically get uh, you get billed either, whichever direction the power is going. So even when I was contributing to the grid, I was getting billed for that. So uh, just keep that in mind. Don't turn on your your uh, power, your DC stuff for very long, um, your solar panels, and don't hook them into the grid until you really have that net meter in place. Okay, now it's booted up and it's since the DC power coming in and it started, it's early morning, so I'm only producing 69 watts. That'll get up to almost 7,000 uh, later today. So you can see it totally peaks, like this chart shows you that during the day it starts out really low and peaks way high. So. Um, and it also shows you, this is a Sunny Boy 7000. Um, it, it also shows you your lines there. See how I've only got a little bit of a, like 1.1 amps, but 274 volts coming in on one, one side, the A side, and then the B side has about the same. Um, so I could add panels. I could actually add a fourth line too of panels. It supports up to four lines coming in. Okay, so there you have it. We uh, completed the project, got all approved, got our net meter in, so we're good to go. Um, I'm producing power. I'm excited to see how we do over the long term. Like I think my bill will probably be just a few bucks a month. Um, and the main takeaways for me were that it wasn't super hard. I mean, there were some technical things to overcome, but overall, you can do it. It's a great do-it-yourself project, um, and you save probably it probably only cost you a fourth of what it would cost to do it elsewhere so uh, good luck and let me know if you have any questions leave comments and uh, we'll talk to you later see ya